we have here is a 1925 Ford Model T. It was built in uh, Detroit, Michigan, um, in America, and I've just um, imported it into Australia. Okay, now to, to check the, uh, the level of the uh, uh, petrol in the tank, or gas if you live in America, um, there's no fuel gauge on the dash like on a modern car. Um, to check the fuel we actually use um, a dipstick, which is um, uh, graded in uh, gallons. Now the fuel tank on a Model T is located uh, under the front seat. Just raise the seat cushion like so. And um, we just undo the filler cap here. and uh, just put the dipstick in and right now it's got about uh, five gallons of uh, petrol in there so uh, had to go a fair way on that probably a, probably about a hundred miles or so something like that um, now to check the oil, the, uh, the Model T has no dipstick like on a modern car. Um, what you actually have to do is uh, get down under the car and um, behind the uh, flywheel housing there is uh, a couple of petcocks which you, uh, you uh, open the top one and, um, and if any oil drips out then uh, you know your oil levels uh, is correct. Um, if you find that nothing drips out and you open the bottom one and nothing drips out then you know you've got to put some more uh, oil in there or fix up any leaks. So that's how you check the oil. So you, you reach down under the car and you undo that top petcock there and if oil drips out then you know you've got enough in there. So no uh, no dipstick. Now something that's very important is to make sure that uh, the tyres are, are, are properly um, uh, inflated. Uh, a modern car runs probably about uh, 25 or 30 pounds pressure, something like that. Um, these tyres, um, as you can see, are, are fairly skinny tyres. Um, these little tyres run at around 55 pounds pressure, so they're uh, quite a high pressure tyre. And uh, at the moment, they uh, they look as though they're um, they're all right. So um, we're uh, we're pretty much ready to hit the road. Now the engine itself is extremely simple, that was Henry Ford's vision to create a car that was, was simple and cheap and reliable. Um, as you can see there's not a lot under here. Um, you've got your uh, fuel switch down here which I'll just uh, switch that on so we can start the engine. Um, the carburetor itself is very simple, it's just a simple um, updraft carburetor. Um, the fuel is gravity fed from the fuel tank which is just under the front seat. and. Um, yeah. Now the distributor itself is located um, at the bottom of the hub down here, uh, which fires, uh, which which takes uh, six volts of electricity from the uh, from the um, from the battery or from your magneto, and um, converts that to the uh, twenty thousand volts uh, required to fire the spark plugs, and that comes from your uh, your four ignition co your four uh, coil boxes rather uh, behind the uh, cowl there. What's confusing to a lot of people with the Model T um, is its controls, which are um, significantly different to that of a modern car. And what's most confusing is the fact that you've got uh, three pedals down the floor down there, none of which is the um, accelerator pedal. So I'll just run through those with you now. Starting on the right hand side, you've got an ordinary brake pedal. It functions like it does on a modern car. You step on it and the car stops. The pedal in the middle is um, different though, this one is the reverse pedal, so you step on it 
and the car goes backwards. And the pedal on the left is your clutch pedal. Now that's uh, this is the one that gets most people uh, confused and because it's used in conjunction with the handbrake lever. Now when it's all the way back like it is now the um, handbrake is engaged and the transmission is in neutral. Now when you move the handbrake to the vertical position at uh, 90 degrees to the floor you've released the handbrake and you've actually got the car in neutral. So to make the car go forward you now step on the left pedal and the car goes forward in low gear. Um, now to get it in high gear you push the handbrake lever all the way forward you'll notice that the clutch pedal pops up um, so if you've got your foot on that pedal um, you push the handbrake lever forward and you uh, take your foot off of the uh, clutch and you're in high gear. So the Model T only has two forward gears um, and, uh, and reverse as well. Now I mentioned that the uh, the Model T has no accelerator pedal on the floor. That's actually controlled with this lever on the right hand side of the steering wheel here. You push the lever down, the engine goes faster and faster, you pull it up all the way up here and the engine idles. Now on the left hand side of the uh, steering column here we have a spark advance. And what this does is it, it adjusts the timing on the engine, it adjusts the timing of the spark. So um, when you start the car you start it with the spark um, retarded which is all the way up like this and once the engine is running you push the spark advance down and the engine will smooth out as the timing is corrected. The dashboard itself is, uh, is very simple. Um, you've got um, your key. Um, earlier Model T's had a, had a coil box switch down here. There was a switch on the coil box itself and you can see the uh, coil box um, under the dash here. And inside there are your four coil boxes, one for each cylinder of the engine. We're back up on the dash here, as I said, very simple. This one's got a key. If you turn the key to the left, you can hear the coils. Um, you can hear the coils are active now. Uh, that's on battery, by the way. And if you turn the key to the right, you're on uh, magneto, uh, which are actually magnets uh, attached to the flywheel um, behind the engine. Okay, there's an amp meter in the middle. And another control to know is, is the choke, um, which is just a simple uh, mechanical choke um, to the carburetor to give you a, a rich fuel mixture for starting. Now starting the Model T is um, it's fairly simple. Um, there's, there's only a couple of things to remember when you're starting it. Um, when the engine's cold, however, it is important that you uh, prime the engine first, and what that means is you've got to get some uh, fuel up into the cylinders to make it uh, so it can, so there's something there to burn so it can start. So that's what we'll do first. Now to prime the engine, what you've got to make sure is that you have the key off, um, so that the engine doesn't start and or break your wrist when you're priming it, because when you're priming it, you have to use, and this is the only time that you use your right hand to turn the crank. Um, because you need to have your left hand free to, to open the choke. So to prime it, I'll just demonstrate that for you now. Down at the bottom of the radiator here, there's a small metal ring, and we just pull that out, and that's the choke. Now to prime the engine, and again, this is the only time you use your right hand, you just turn the engine over about three, maybe four times to get some uh, fuel up into the cylinder. So we'll do that now. One. Two, three, and now we're ready to start. Okay, so now that we've primed the engine, we're uh, we're ready to start. And um, again, it's it's all very simple. Now the engine's primed. We double check to make sure that the uh, handbrake is engaged so that the car won't roll forward and run over us while we're trying to start it up. We turn the key to battery or magneto. It, uh, it doesn't actually. Uh, matter if your battery is charged. If my, when my battery is charged I usually like to start it on battery. Um, so you, you turn on your key, you make sure your spark is fully retarded all the way back which means the uh, spark advance lever has to be all the way up and the throttle it needs to be barely open for starting. So we'll start up now. 
So we retard the spark, throttle barely open, and we'll turn the key on. And always important, make sure you only ever start the car, or crank the car with your left hand, um, because the, uh, the engine rotates in a clockwise direction. Um, if you try starting it with your right hand, if the, en if the engine was to kick back, the chances are it'd break your wrist. So, very important, only ever start the car with your left hand. So we engage the crank, like so, and I usually grab hold of the fender so to give myself a bit of extra strength. And um, just a case of turn, one half turn should start it. just a case of uh, advancing the spark until the engine runs smoother. I'll do that now. As you can hear how much better the engine runs once you've uh, advanced the spark and got the timing correct. Let's, uh, let's start it up again. Remember to retard your spark, throttle barely open, turn the key on, remember left hand to start, lock in the crank, grab hold of the fender, give yourself a bit of extra strength and away we go. And advance the spark. important once the engine's running remember to advance the spark otherwise you will have very little power and you'll be wasting fuel okay an electric start is very similar it's um, so instead of using the starting handle the, this particular car is equipped with a, an electric starter as all Model T's had um, from 1919 onwards um, right up until 1927 when it went out of production um, they had uh, electric start and uh, electric headlights as well and the starter or at least on this particular Model T is actually under the floor so that uh, section of the floor just there the whole uh, area is, is one big button on this particular car um, the, the button to start the, uh, the engine is, uh, is under the floor and the procedure is the same for starting make sure the handbrake is all the way back to disengage the transmission and to make sure the parking brake is set make sure to uh, retard the spark push that lever all the way up and barely open the throttle for starting and then it's just a case of turn on the key to battery and as you can hear I've hot started again the engine was in the right position for starting so we'll just switch that off two hot starts in one day that's pretty good we'll switch that back onto battery throttle barely open and just step on the starter and remember to uh, reduce the speed a little bit and advance the spark until the engine smooths out and also it's a good idea as I said before to once the engine's running to save your battery switch it straight over to magneto like so. Okay, now we'll uh, go for a little drive. Whoa. 